Hello, I am Janina Sika. I am very sorry I cannot be there in, in Tasmania with you, uh, but I am presenting on behalf of all members of the um, um, Humboldt Extension Task Group within TADWIC, and some of our members are there, so I will, I will point you to the people that you need to, to talk to. Um, okay, so the, the aim of this presentation is to introduce the Humboldt Extension, which is a proposed standard or a, an extension to Darwin Core standard to better capture and report data coming from ecological inventories and other monitoring efforts. But what is so important about inventory and monitoring data? I am sure you are familiarized with many different types of biodiversity data, but in this slide, I will only focus on two particular types. In, in the first line of this table, you can see the incidental records, which are the most common type of biodiversity data, uh, where a person uh, records a species in a particular point in space and time. But these records do not have a taxonomic scope, so no uh, target list of species or taxa. And potentially, they don't have a planned sampling design, or the design is very simple. So these records only provide presence information, what we call presence-only data. On the other hand, inventories, shown from row from the second row to the fourth one in this slide, have a defined taxonomic scope. For instance, the list of butterflies in Hobart. And they also have a sampling design, uh, which can vary from very simple points to a highly complex design with traps nested within plots, nested within sites. For instance, and they also ha have a known effort. So the number of people, hours, or, or distance uh, traveled, or a combination of, of all of them. But having a taxonomic scope helps us identify which species were not recorded or not detected. Of course, these non detections can be true absences species that were not present, or false absences, species that were present but were not detected. By increasing the, sample, the sampling effort and having a proper sample de sampling designed, we can increase the probability of detection of the species and thus decrease the rate of false absences. So knowing the information about the scope, the sampling design, the effort, allows us to infer absences. And this is very important information when we're trying to estimate species distribution or changes in abundance. In its current form, Darwin Core already does a great job allowing users to describe species occurrences, so presence-only data but it is limited in its ability to describe the context of those occurrences. For instance, the detailed information on the scopes, the sampling design and effort. So the Humboldt extension for ecological inventories was proposed to extend the Darwin core capabilities to systematically capture information from inventories. As I mentioned before, the Darwin, the Darwin Core standard has proven to be immensely helpful in sharing species occurrence data, but also in promoting biodiversity research following the FAIR principles of findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of data, which is at the core of the Humboldt extension as well. The Humboldt, the, sorry, the Darwin Core also currently enables reporting on some of the information contained in inventories. For instance, the terms like a sampling design, a sampling protocol or, or sampling effort. 
but it does not provide the structure needed to completely describe the inventory process because of its flat structure. So the humble extension has been proposed to extend the Darwin core and allow the reporting not only of all the elements of the inventory process, but allows the capture of inventories with a hierarchical structure. And we were able to do so because we started from the event concept in Darwin Core, where inventories can be organized as events with different nesting levels. But, but what is an event? So according to Darwin Core, an event is an action that occurs at some location during some time. And so this concept gives us the flexibility to organize data collection events within a survey in a hierarchical structure. So for example, we can see three uh, examples of inventory here. The first one can be thought of a point count where th three species were, locate, were detected. So we have one event with three occurrences. The second, uh, shown as a square over South America, can be thought of a site where two point counts were sampled, one in which three species were detected and in another one with only one species was detected. So we have one higher level event, the site, with two sub-events, which are the point counts. In the third example, so the larger rectangle, we can think of a site where two plots were sampled, and within each of the plots, two point counts were surveyed. So here we have one higher level event with two sub-events, the plots, with two sub-sub-events, the point counts. This nested sampling design can be translated into a relational database schema as a parent-child event relationship. So that's what you see in the right side of the slide. And this can be incorporated or recorded in the Humboldt extension for ecological inventories. I am not going to talk about the 40, 54 terms included in the vocabulary because you can explore them in the, in the Humble Extension Quick Reference Guide that we developed. But what I want to point out is that we have proposed terms that help reporting the, for instance, the detailed structure of your sampling design, the information on all your scopes, so the spatial temporal scopes, the taxonomic scope, so your list of species, but also some other organismal scopes like a life stage or growth form. Uh, we also include terms uh, that describe the protocols used, if you had material sampled in your survey or the amount of effort that was required. And this, we, we were able to propose this standard thanks to the work of many people for over a decade. Because these ideas started in a workshop in 2013 where different experts discussed the need for a standard for biodiversity surveys. And the main conclusion of this workshop were, well, the main conclusions were captured in a paper led by Rob Buralnik and Walter Yetz, where they introduced the framework of capturing um, inventory data as the Humboldt core. Then in 2021, we established the Humboldt task group to translate that framework into a standard. So we revised all terms proposed in the original paper and we decided or defined the Humboldt as an extension to Darwin Core rather than a standalone 
standard. As part of this work, in 2022, we tested the Humboldt extension with real datasets, where we received a lot of valuable feedback, and all of that is included in the implementation experience uh, report, which is submitted with the with the rest of this of the proposal. And in here, we updated some definitions and we even included new terms. So finally, we submitted last month, we submitted the proposal for public review. Uh, and for the public review, you will find the list of terms, so all the vocabulary, the 54 terms included in the, in the Humboldt extension vocabulary, a, a guideline for using one specific term, a, another guideline regarding the properties of hierarchical events and how to use the Humboldt extension uh, when hierarchies are needed, we also include the quick reference guide. We also have, and this is a work in progress, but we have developed a user guide on how to use the extension. And after the, the all the feedback from the review, um, we will try to finish that user guideline. And that it includes some other utility files. Uh, for now, we have uh, 56 open issues, so all the new terms, uh, based on um, feedback that we've gathered over the last few weeks. We proposed a new control vocabulary for one particular term. We also proposed to borrow identification terms from Darwin Core instead of having our own uh, terms or so terms for the extension. And we are also now following the Darwin Core Technical Architecture Group recommendations on Boolean terms. Uh, the public review is still open. We are definitely waiting for your feedback. We, I encourage you to go and take a look at the whole vocabulary and share your thoughts. Uh, you can go to the landing page that eco.tadwig.org um, and share your thoughts. So thank you so much for your interest and, and for staying uh, at this presentation. Of course, uh, this proposal would not have been possible without the collaborative efforts of our amazing members of the, of the Humboldt Extension Task Group. I do not have pictures of everybody, but in there you can see Peter Brenton and Steve uh, Baskov. And I know Dimitri Shigel and Yiming Gang are also there. So please look for them and, and start conversations with them. Otherwise, please email me with any doubts or comments about the extension. Thank you so much. Bye.